Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials, all info, no fluff. Today we're going to talk about some hotkeys for project-based settings that you may want to flip between pretty quickly, so it's good to have hotkeys for them. So we're going to start with all the stuff that is accessible through your main toolbar up here. However, when you're deep in editing, you don't want to move your mouse all the way up here and click on things, do you? That said, I do like to keep the main toolbar and use it kind of as a visual indicator of what's enabled and what's not. I can really quickly glance at my main toolbar, for example, and see that my snapping is on, my metronome is on, my pre-roll is off. I can, for example, set my ripple editing and this will tell me that I'm in all tracks mode. This is tracks, this is all tracks and those icons change. I added some stuff to the main toolbar as well, which we'll talk about in a second. So let's get to it. The first one is auto crossfade enabled or disabled. The next one is something I added and that's the toggle enable disabled default fade in or fade out. And I have a hotkey for it as well, command option and K. So with this on, when you split an item or delete some items or import a new item, Item, it'll automatically have these fades on it and with that off it won't so pretty simple next up is ripple editing I have changed the hotkey for this for the same reason that I don't want to move my mouse all the way up here and click on it the default is option or alt and P but if you want to press alt and P you got to press alt with your left hand and then move your right hand all the way from your mouse onto the P key and that just takes too long who wants to lift their fingers off of their mouse sounds like noob stuff to me so I have switched two default hotkeys no Normally option and R or alt and R opens the routing matrix. Option P cycles through ripple editing modes, but I have switched these two because it's not very often that I have the routing matrix visible. And if I do, I'm definitely not in the middle of editing. I'm okay with it being option and P. The P stands for routing matrix. And option and R, both of which are keys that I can just press with my left hand, that toggles through my ripple editing modes. Additionally, I have some mouse modifiers for temporarily ripple editing. So what that means is, for example, right now my ripple editing is off. If I use command and drag on a track, it will work as if ripple editing per track is on. And if I do command option control and do it, it'll act as if ripple editing all is enabled. These are just temporarily until you release the mouse modifier. So as you can see, it like lights up the icon, but as soon as I let it go, it'll go back to how it was. And you can find these options in media item left drag. For command, I have changed that to move item. First you select move item and then ripple edit this track and then I can additionally add ignoring snap to it or something like that. So command enables ripple editing just for that track. Command and option is to move, disabling ripple editing and ignoring snap and that's good in case I'm in ripple editing all mode and I just want to really quickly move one item without affecting the entire ripple editing structure. And finally, with my ripple editing off, if I use command control option and then move my mouse wheel, it'll act as if ripple editing all is enabled. The next one here is move envelope points with media items and razor edits. Again, this is not something I toy with too, too often, but I have it on because it allows to access some extra options. Next up is your grid. You can toggle your grid lines visible with option G and then option and L gives you the snap and grid settings. When I'm in my array, range view, I very rarely change my grid settings, but I have some grid options here. I also have a cycle action that toggles through my most needed grid settings and those are whole measures. So one, quarter notes, eighth notes, eighth note triplets, and then 16th. I also have control command option backslash to toggle frame rate grid. And if I hit it again, I'll go back to the most recent grid size. Another way I can change my grid size really quickly is this. I just press a key on my mouse and then I get this drop down menu. And it's a Amagalma script called set project grid via drop down menu, which is set to equals, but I have the equal sign on a key on my cool ass mouse that has some extra keys. So I can really quickly hit that key and then change my grid size from there as well. Finally, I have control page up and down to double or half my grid size. So that's all my grid stuff. To see what the cycle action is in detail, you can check out the blog. But really, I ripped it off of a video by John Reaper. I'll try to find that video and link it up there. It's been ages. The next item is one that I've added, and this is toggling pre-roll. So if I hit command and K, it turns the pre-roll on and off. And the next one is metronome enable, which by default doesn't have a hotkey in Reaper. I am using command option and T, which normally is for 
or view transport. But really, do we need a hotkey for that? How often am I hiding or showing this? Much more useful if you ask me to be able to enable and disable my metronome. And another useful metronome settings to set is this one option set metronome volume MIDI CC OSC only. And whenever an action has MIDI CC or OSC only in front of it, it's still possible to control it using your mouse wheel. So I have option shift and mouse wheel to adjust the volume of my metronome. So that's that. Next is snapping and that's option and S. Great hotkey. I can just run it with one hand. Next up is locking and you can enable locking and this is project wide locking by pressing L or I can hit shift and L to get my lock settings. And here you can select what is being locked. So, you know, if you're mixing, for example, you can lock your items. You don't really need to move your items. You're just mixing them or you can lock your regions and markers, time signature markers and tempo markers, etc. Next one is unsolo all. And that one is useful in case you have a really big project and something is solo, then you don't want to scroll up and down to find out what it is. Next is solo in front, which I've covered before. So I'll put a link to that. The next one is to unarm all tracks. And this last button here enables item editing and selection grouping. And you can also use option shift and G for this to enable or disable this. So if I have a bunch of items grouped and this is off, I can still move these items independently. But if I enable this option, now these items only move together. Additionally, you have this other thing, selecting one item selects group with this off. It will only select this one item. But if I turn that one on and now I select one item in a group, as you can see, it selects all of them. So that also applies to additional mouse mods like trimming them or putting a fade on them. And these last two, you can ignore them unless you watch my sound design series, in which case you know what they do. Last but not least, I have some ruler based settings. So obviously you can right click on your ruler and you can select a primary and a secondary time unit for your ruler. So right now I'm in measures and beats. I can additionally, for example, add time code if I'm composing music for film or something. However, setting both of these again takes a lot of time. So I have created this cycle action and what it does is toggle between my most used ruler settings. So my most used ruler settings are just measures and beats for music. Then I have measures and beats plus time code for when I'm composing for films. Then I have just time code for when I'm editing audio for a film. And lastly, I have minutes and seconds followed by pure seconds. The reason I'm adding pure second numbers down here is just to give it a little bit of visual differential between time code and this one. Otherwise, sometimes I could get mixed up between the two. And I show you this custom action. You may want to do it a different way, but I basically set time units for my first ruler. If I don't want a secondary ruler, then that's none. If I do want it, then I'll put it there. And this way I can really quickly toggle between the relevant ruler modes I use most often. A hotkey for that is control option and R. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. And if you like the work I do, please consider donating to me via buymeacoffee.com. The link of that will be in the description. Thanks to Bob and Christian for being our most recent donors. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.